Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop and today is Thursday, September the 19th. Still nothing going on in the tropics, but the potential for development still continues uh, in the Caribbean Sea. Nothing there yet, but let's take a look and see what's going on. First of all, let's go right straight to the satellite imagery and there you can see somewhat of a wave trying to develop over here across the uh, uh, coast of Central America but nothing of any significance yet. Further off to the east, there's a little wave to the uh, east of the Lesser Antille Islands. There's the remnants of tropical system Gordon. And much further to the uh, east, we do see a new tropical wave developing off the coast, or actually uh, inland on Africa, soon to merge off the coast of Africa. And that wave might be uh, significant as it continues to drift off toward the west. I'm beginning to see a little bit more activity developing now in the intertropical convergence zone in the tropical Atlantic Ocean. It's been very quiet there lately, but uh, we're at the peak of the hurricane season right now. There you can see the graph itself. Uh, we're right smack dab in the middle of the peak of the hurricane season. So most of the storms develop in September and early October, and that's where we are right now on the calendar. Actually, just a little bit past that peak, but we're still in the peak of the hurricane season. Got to keep an eye on this wave way out here to the uh, west of us. Uh, let me bring it over. You can see it right over there to the east of us, excuse me, as it uh, uh, has potential to develop. We're going to look at that in the models in just a minute. All right, let's take a look at the uh, uh, I want to look at the National Hurricane Center information, and there it is right there. And there we have a tropical system in the Caribbean Sea that's expected to develop. And there's two others, remnants of Gordon uh, right now, and another one uh, to the east, ex Gordon there, another one to the west of Gordon. But I'm not expecting any problems with those whatsoever. However, let's take a listen to what the National Hurricane Center says about this A broad one here. area of low pressure could form by early next week over the northwestern Caribbean Sea. Thereafter, gradual development of this system is possible, and a tropical depression could form as the system moves slowly to the north or northwest over the northwestern Caribbean Sea and into the southern Gulf of Mexico through the middle part of next week. Formation chance through 48 hours, low, near 0%. Formation chance through 7 days, medium, 40%. All right. All right, that's from the National Hurricane Center. All right, let's go into the maps right now and uh, look at the uh, uh, computer maps. And first of all, uh, let's take a look at the German model. That's what's called the ICON model. And uh, this is from the uh, today's run on uh, uh, Thursday, September 19th. And you can see not much trying to develop out there, but it, it gets a little bit better organized uh, throughout the weekend and going into uh, late Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, going into Monday. We're now beginning to see somewhat of a tropical system trying to develop off the coast of Central America, moving up toward the Yucatan Peninsula, and then moving over the Yucatan, just clipping the northern portion of it as a developing low-pressure system. Then it moves into the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, where those uh, water temperatures there are in the mid to upper 80s, and that's the fuel for tropical systems. And there you can see it begins to wind up and get a little bit better organized. And the ICON model only goes out to 180 hours. So this takes it into Thursday sunset uh, of next week, a week from today. All right, let's take a look at the uh, uh, another model. And that would be the uh, uh, let's look at the Canadian model first of all. Now remember yesterday the Canadian model was pushing that storm up into eastern Alabama, western Georgia. Uh, let's see where it goes today and uh, as you can see not much going on over the weekend. Something trying to develop a little bit further east than what the ICON model was showing and then uh, it moves off to the just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula, clipping the Yucatan Peninsula, similar to what the ICON model just did. This is uh, at sunrise on Wednesday of next week, six days from now. And then you see it pushes it into the western Gulf of Mexico as well, but a little bit further eastward. And that has a lot of warm water to work with out there. And then again, it continues to moving it off to the north and then pushes it up, to, up, up toward the lower Mississippi River Valley, bringing it on shore there. Remember yesterday, it was way over here in Alabama and western Georgia. Today, it has it further to the west over into Louisiana, eastern Texas, moving up the Mississippi, uh, just to the west of the greater Mississippi River Valley. All right. 
Let's take a look at the GFS, and there we have the American model here and the global forecast system. Again, showing just like all the other ones, not much development until late in the weekend going into early next week. Here we are into Wednesday at sunset. So this one's slowing it down considerably. Uh, it has it just to the northwest tip of the uh, Yucatan Peninsula between uh, Cuba and the Yucatan, so the Straits of Yucatan, and then it continues to move it off to the north and winds it up, but then it stalls, and then it pushes it back to the north-northeast uh, over across uh, around the Tampa, Florida area. This is when? This is uh, uh, Saturday sunset. Saturday a week, not this Saturday, a week from this Saturday. Uh, we're out now at 228 hours and looking at the uh, system, it goes right across Florida, off the Georgia coast, South Carolina coast, dumping heavy rains across coastal Georgia, South Carolina. Um, remember yesterday, it stalled the front right about in this area here, just off the coast of Georgia. Uh, it was right around here, and, and but this time it continues to keep it moving. So uh, keeping an eye on that. Oh, what's going on over here? That's that other wave I was telling you about showing up in the computer models, and there it comes in. Of course, now we're up to 318 hours here. Uh, this is um, October 2nd, and uh, but it's something to keep an eye on as well. We're beginning to see more development out in the tropical Atlantic Ocean than what we have been seeing. So things are beginning to get a little bit better organized right now. Here's the list of the names. You know, Helene's the next name on the list, and that'll be followed by Isaac and Joyce, Kirk, Leslie, Milton, Nadine, Oscar, Patty, Raphael, Sarah. I'm not expecting all these to develop in the next couple of days. But there's the list, and there's, you know, we're going to start seeing some more of these storms. And, you know, at times we might see two or three storms at the same time, named storms, not all affecting the coastal areas, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, the uh, global models, let's take a look at the ECMWF, see if it has come in yet. Uh, let's bring this back over here. Um, it was uh, running a little slow today. Let's see if it's in. Uh, nope, that's from this morning. I have a quick look, though. Uh, and it's it's not as defined, but it's uh, called the fast mode. And uh, let's take a look at that, bringing it back to now. Uh, see, nothing going on, and we're going into, where are we here? Uh, Wednesday, uh, sunrise, there it is. It forms deep in the, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico in the Bay of Campeche, and then it moves it. This is when? This is Thursday sunrise, and then it moves it into the western Gulf of Mexico and then it starts to crank it up as well. So it seems like the models are trending a little bit more westward at this time. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But um, I had a good question asked about uh, these uh, storms and so forth. Uh, which model is better for the hurricane and tropical storm systems? Well, none of them are better than the others. They're all just as good. It depends on the type of the storm and so forth and the time frame we're looking at. And as a matter of fact, um, the, um, the models don't do very well with systems that haven't developed yet uh, as per this case here. And in, in that case, you could see a lot of variations in the path and the future of the storm itself, even the strength, the path. Uh, where it goes, what have you, uh, with weaker systems. Now, as the storm gets stronger and more defined, then the models do a much better job at predicting where these storms will go. And also another thing that you keep in mind, uh, anything beyond five days, 120 hours, you're not going to get that much uh, great information. You can watch it like we're watching right now uh, and uh, see, see there's potential trending, potential threats that could be developing. That's the key word, could be developing. It doesn't mean it's going to develop, but the threat will be there that we could see development uh, in the tropics with these systems. But uh, less than 120 hours, uh, when you get down to less than five days, the models start doing a much better job in basically all of them uh, usually uh, under five or four days will uh, converge and will probably see basically the same path. Now, if you see a lot of uh, uh, variations in the models at uh, three days out, uh, then you have some issues to deal with. But usually these models, these four that I show you, and then you throw in the, uh, when it's less than uh, five days out, the National Hurricane uh, models, uh, gives a, a much better idea. Of course, the best source of information is the National Hurricane Center, but they don't start giving out forecasts until the storm is at least five days away. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. With that being said, uh, 
We got a great weekend coming up looking at uh, information. You can get more information about the local weather conditions around the Savannah, Hilton Head, Statesboro, Brunswick, Hinesville area, Jessup, all southeastern Georgia, southern South Carolina. That's what I uh, pertain to. I've been living in this area for over 40 years now, 42 years, I think, if I can do my mathematics. Uh, so I have an idea what's going on with the weather around here uh, somewhat, I suppose. But anyway, National Hurricane Center gives you great information. And I get uh, that information I relayed on my Weather and Nature Facebook page and also on my website, savannapat.name. Uh, a lot of great weather information is there. And you can follow me on my other, other uh, social medias, uh, threads, uh, 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 Instagram, uh, also on uh, that thing called X, I call it Twitter. Uh, and, uh, uh, and of course, and YouTube, which you're watching right now on YouTube. And a quick peek in the weekend weather uh, coming up. Yeah, we got some really nice weather, a little bit on the warm side, but that's okay. Uh, temperatures in the mid to upper 80s, mostly middle 80s throughout the weekend, generally fair to partly cloudy conditions. So uh, if you want to get another grab at the beach, this will be a great weekend for that. And then going into the middle portion by next week, uh, still not too bad have to keep an eye on the tropics and see what happens. Well, that's why you got me, I, I hope anyway. I'll keep you posted uh, right here on my YouTube channel. So with that being said, have a great day and a great weekend coming up.